Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Stacy from PeonyLaneDesigns.com and I am coming to you today from inside of Fluffy the Wonder Band to share with you my top 10 things you need to survive junking. I have a junking survival kit, it goes with me everywhere I go and believe me, if you don't have some of this stuff, you're gonna regret so, it. So let's get started. Number 10. Is of course actually is Fluffy the Wonder Man. You need a vehicle big enough if you're gonna be a junker and if you want to do this professionally you're gonna need a vehicle that's big enough to haul stuff so you're either gonna need an SUV or a minivan or a van of some kind where you can lay those seats down or you can take the seats out completely I had a, a baby SUV it had served me it has served me well for a few years I took the seats out of the back and I could get a full dresser in the back I I got the waterfall dressers in there. I could get a buffet in my RAV4 when I took one of the back seats out. So I left one back seat in for the kid because, yeah, you kind of have to let the kid ride along, but you know, none of her friends could ever ride in my car. But now I love having the van because I can get a lot more stuff in here, which means longer junking trips. So it's it's just wonderful. But if you, you know, if you're driving a, a Toyota Corolla and you want to go junking, you are going to make a lot of pit stops to unload that puppy. So consider investing in a bigger vehicle. Number nine. Notebook and pen. It seems silly. I know people are like, why don't you just put it in your phone? Well, because a lot of times I get calls for special requests. I literally get phone calls for special requests. Dropping my notebook. So I write them down. In this notebook it's a nice pocket sized notebook um, my special request list is here I have dimensions for things that I'm looking for I also have my wish list in here of things I'm looking for you wouldn't believe how many times I write it down and then it appears like literally write it down and it shows up somewhere and I go through the list all the time when I'm shopping so if I right before I go into a store or I go into a sale or an estate sale I double check my list it's a nice little reminder of everything that you're looking for. And if you're picking for clients, and sometimes I do, I have some special requests, it's good to remember what they want. You know, it's it's really hard for me. I, I'm looking and I get obsessed with what I'm trying to find for my own shop, for my own booth, and then I forget my clients. So um, yeah, it's a good little reminder to have. It's also nice when you um, wanna jot down street addresses and things like that when you have to come back later if you have to rent a truck or whatever to big, bring back a bigger piece say you do have the Toyota Corolla and you need to borrow a truck or whatever it's good to have the address and phone number of whoever you're buying it from so that you can pick it up or not. Number eight is oh, yeah. ratchet straps or tie downs. Believe me these come in handy more than you know. First of all, if you do have a bigger vehicle and you've got pieces that are larger, but they're not filling the space, you don't want them tipping over on your small glass products. You can use these to lash them down. Um, it's also come in handy when I did have the smaller SUV to keep the door closed. If something stuck out just a little too much, I ratchet strap the door down if you have a trunk ratchet strap that trunk down make sure you also have a red bandana for some some states it's law that if it's hanging out so far from the back end of your car you need a red bandana so I don't have that on the list but um, put it with your ratchet straps and you won't be sorry number seven antibacterial wipes yeah you're gonna be touching a lot of garbage you're gonna be touching a lot of dirt you're gonna be, baby wipes work too, but find yourself some antibacterial wipes or some baby wipes because after every sale I go picking through or old house or estate sale, I wanna wash my hands like right now. I don't wanna have to find a bathroom. I want my hands clean like right now. So you're gonna want those. Invest in a lot of them. Number six. Water. Stay hydrated, especially in the summer, especially in the winter too. I, I keep water with me all the time. I actually have a mini fridge in my van. That's a step up. If you're starting out, bring a cooler. 
I have a, a mini fridge that plugs into my cigarette lighter because it's nice to keep my beverages nice and cold. So you're going to want to stay hydrated summer, winter, fall, spring. So make sure you have water with you. Um, in the van, I will literally carry a case of water with me because I can't. It, it can fit right here between the seats. Stick a case of water right there. I stick the bottles that I need in the cooler or in the little mini fridge and, and off you go. So number five work gloves these are leather work gloves get leather work gloves I'm telling you the amount of things I've picked up that had sharp edges or major sliverage coming off of it or actual pieces of metal I have I've gone through two pairs of these already and I don't regret them my hands are still intact. I don't have giant scars. Um, I can tell you the times that I forget my gloves, I regret it. It helps with carrying. It helps with lifting. Um, just the edges of wood cutting in your hand hurt. You can't hold a piece as long as you can when you've got these protecting your skin. So invest in a good pair of work gloves. I just got these at the hardware store. I like the leather. I don't like the canvas because the sharps can still really go through that canvas pretty easy. So invest in some good leather ones. Number four. This one, you know, I don't think people think about this stuff, but um, I have a jeweler's loop that I carry with me. You can do this with a magnifying glass as well. It's not just for jewelry. A lot of times when I pick up a piece of old glass or, you know, china, you cannot read the hallmark that's on the bottom or a piece of silver or, you know, you, you need something to magnify the little stamp on the bottom or the printing on the bottom just to make sure that you can read it. Um, it is great for jewelry as well. You can check to make sure that clasps are are functioning properly that the tying on it is right it's very nice for looking at paintings and things like that to make sure there are no tears if you see a piece where it looks like there might be a rip or a tear in the corner this is nice to get up close and make sure that it's not an actual tear sometimes there's just where it's leaned against something and there's a defect as far as it pushing the the canvas out but it's not actually torn so bring a magnifying glass invest in a cheap jewelers loop like this I think this is a 10x or 1x it's just as one on the side it has served me well for a lot of years I mean I keep this in my bag I keep it I have a bag that I keep with me with all my stuff in it and I just put this in the bag and it has it has come in handy more than once to look at even you know silver pieces the stamping in it to see if it says sterling or if it says that it's silver plated or if it's actually you know some other kind of metal so invest in a jeweler's loop or a magnifying glass you can find them on Amazon you can find them you can get a, a magnifying glass at the drugstore so whatever whatever works for you number three flashlight yeah, flashlight it it's really simple it's a simple thing to have but uh, you again it goes sort of hand in hand with the jewelers loop up a couple in here that I pick up at the dollar store when I find them um, it'll come in handy more than you realize because you're in a dark garage or a dark basement or a house that is no longer has electricity on I've been in all kinds of situations where the flashlight has come in handy you can certainly use the one on your phone I prefer to use my flashlight because I don't want my phone to get wrecked or destroyed if I drop it. I have dropped these. <laughs> just just get the dollar store flashlight, trust me. <laughs> I don't want to drop my phone in a crusty situation and then not be able to find it because it's dark. So um, yeah, just get, get the dollar flashlight, keep a couple extras on hand. Number two. Number two is if you're really considering doing this for a living, you have to have this. I use an app on my phone, it's called Mileage IQ. I'll put a link in the description below. I cannot even tell you how much I love this app. It literally tracks every location that I go to and um, I can classify it if it's business or if it is personal. It is amazing. I had more deductions as far as mileage last year 
than I had ever had before because I go junking a lot, but I forget to start to track my mileage. I, I literally will get in the car and start driving because I'm so excited to go junking and I forget to track what I'm doing. Bad Stacy. Yes, Bad Stacy. So I got the app. It cost me, I think, 10 bucks a month. Totally worth every penny. I had like $4,000 in mileage deductions last year. Uh, I would have never tracked all that mileage. It, I can name locations like when I go to my doctor's office, medical mileage is deductible and automatically class, classify that. Um, it's been a lifesaver. And speaking of being a lifesaver, I gave my husband my login information for this app. I had a very creepy experience out in the country where I went and junk in and I was in a barn and it literally smelled like blood when I walked in there. And it was a farm, so I mean, maybe they're slaughtering animals. I just kind of tried to overlook it. The gentleman that was running the sale was a little odd, and um, he asked me if I was looking for anything special, and I had said that, you know, at the time I was looking for furniture, and he said there's some in the back room, and I went in, and the floor was extremely spongy, and I chose not to walk back there. And when I turned around, he was like right behind me, and he started laughing the most creepy maniacal laugh, laugh you've ever heard in your entire life. It was the first time I'd ever been terrified out junking. And I immediately left there, called my husband and gave him my login information for mileage IQ because I knew if something happened to me, they could at least find where my body was. <laughs> yes, I write mysteries. If you didn't know that, I do write mysteries and my husband says my, my imagination is, is really active. but. It was very scary to me. And when you're out, or a female and you're out junking alone, it can be extremely intimidating in certain situations. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's for me a safety thing. I, it, it wouldn't stop anyone from hurting me, but at least they could find out the last place that I was. So small consolation, but I kind of like it for that. I also like it for the fact that if I was in an accident or anything like that, he could also find my location. So I highly recommend Mileage IQ between the $4,000 deduction last year and the safety feature of, you know, my husband being able to tell where I am. It's worth the money to me. It's worth every penny. So I'll put the link in the description below. And number one, are you ready for number one, folks? It's big. It's number one. It is. Cash. Small bills. I am not kidding you. I, Whenever I go to the bank, I don't know if they think I'm going to strip clubs or what, but I'm like, could I have $100 in ones if I'm going out shopping? <laughs> because I do not like to have to ask somebody to break a 20 every time I need to give them 50 cents or 75 cents. So... Um, I, <laughs> cash is king. You can make deals with cash all day long. Uh, you, you can offer, I, I don't do a lot of bargaining because where I find my stuff is extremely reasonable anyway. There have been situations where I thought the prices were not reasonable and cash talks. Cash is king. But the small bills are helpful for when you just, you're buying a dish and it's 50 cents. Don't whip out a hundred dollar bill. I mean... It would have come in handy the day that I had the $10 bill and the woman wanted to, it was $5 for the piece that I wanted and she had no change. <laughs> this $5 bill would have come in handy. You know, it's cash is king. So number one survival tip, make sure you have enough cash on hand. So that's it, everyone. That is my top 10 things you need to survive junk in. I'm sure there's more things that I have not added. Actually, I know there are. I know there's more things in my in my kit as a bonus. I mean, I carry lifting straps. I carry snacks with me. There's a lot more things that I take with me on a regular basis because I know what I need to get through. And of course, of course, my lucky junket hand. Happy junkin' everyone. Bye. Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week DIY tutorials and of course, more Junkin videos.